Then let's try to look at how we can quantify or model the energy carried by electromagnetic radiations or in radiative heat transfer. Okay, so here we can use something called Stepan Boltzmann law. The maximum flux, or otherwise we call it E, watt per meter squared, at which radiation may be emitted from a black body surface. Okay, normally black body we call an ideal radiator, is given by Stepan Boltzmann law. Again, you might have heard this uh, the law before in your level physics sometimes. So it, it says that maximum flux E, okay, is proportional to the uh, the the temperature of the surface to the power four. Okay, T S means the surface temperature to the power four. Let's say this uh, the the object just emit electromagnetic radiation. Okay, so then that uh, the maximum flux emitted by this surface is related to its surface temperature. Okay, E is proportional to the uh, the surface temperature to the power four. So then we can just have this uh, the constant to have an equation by avoiding the, the proportional sign. We could say E is equal to sigma times uh, the surface temperature to the power four. Okay, don't get confused with these uh, the, the the notations. Okay, so they are the, they are not universal notations. The, here is the maximum flux, which is in the watt per square meters. Okay, the sigma is what we call the Stepan Boltzmann constant. Okay, uh, which is 5.669 times 10 to the minus 8 watt per meter squared per uh, Kelvin to the power 4. Okay, you don't need to remember that. If, we, if you have to use it, it will be given to you. Okay, so then uh, the MSU power uh, should be given as the sigma times Ts to the power 4. The MSU power can change with the wavelength. Okay, it depends on the, uh, the, the wavelength of a given wave. The, the shorter the wavelength, the higher the emissive power uh, related to that wave. Okay, hope it is clear. Right, so but this is not the equation that we're going to use uh, for the heat transfer calculation because it does not have uh, the heat transfer rate here. So therefore we have to have a different format of Stepan Boltzmann law uh, to be used in heat transfer calculations. Let's see how we can uh, have a modified format of Stepan Boltzmann law to calculate the radiative to heat transfer, right? Uh, that is what uh, we have here. This is the form actually that we're going to use in heat transfer calculations. You can see that Q dot here, rate of heat transfer in volts. Okay, for a real surface, okay, as we call an ideal radiator, the radiation energy can be given by Stepan Boltzmann law. Okay, so that is what we call uh, the Stepan Boltzmann law for the radiator to heat transfer. Right. Let's consider there's a heat source uh, in the atmosphere, so it is just releasing heat to the surrounding based on the radiation. Okay, so then we can model that, uh, the, that uh, the heat transfer behavior using that equation here. We'll try to recognize the terms or the identify the terms here, the Q dot. So the same term that we discussed before for the conduction and convection is equal to emissivity of the surface. Okay, so this is related with the surface now. As I mentioned before, the black surfaces can have high emissivity values. Okay, emissivity can change from zero to one. The ideal black bodies can have one. Okay, so, but Depending on the surface conditions, the other objects can have values in between zero and one. Okay, sigma is the, the uh, Stepan Boltzmann constant. So A is the, the heat transfer surface area related to the radiative heat transfer. Okay, right? Uh, the A is the surface area in square meters. And then TS is the, uh, the surface temperature of the heat source or the, the, the source that emitting uh, electromagnetic radiation. So this is TS to the power four. And then this is T infinity to the power of four now. So this is the temperature of the surrounding. So that means that there's a heat transfer between a heat source and the surrounding. The temperature of the, the heat source is Ts. Okay, the surface of the heat source is having a temperature of Ts and the surrounding is having the T infinity temperature. So here we have T to the power four, T to the power four. Okay, so that is what we call a Stepan Boltzmann law. We can use this to calculate the radiative heat transfer. If you want to get into more details related to some of these terms now, let's look at the emissivity. The emissivity is a property of a radiating surface and is defined as the emissive power of the surface to that of an ideal radiating surface. Normally, an ideal radiating surface can have the emissivity of one. Okay, so then if you try to compare another surface with an ideal radiator, you can have some sort of idea of the emissivity. Okay, ideal radiator having the emissivity of one. Okay, so emissive power actually, what it means, the energy radiated by the body per unit area, per unit time over all the wavelengths, right? Okay, so this is some more information about the emissivity of an object, 
right? So as I mentioned before, the ideal radiator we call is a black body. Okay, they are having the emissivity of one. So that means they can absorb all the energy carried by electromagnetic radiations. There is no any uh, the transmittance or reflectance at all. A black body is a hypothetical body that absorbs all the incident radiation, okay, at all the wavelengths. So that means for a black body, the wavelength does not matter. It can absorb all the forms of energy carried by electromagnetic radiation, regardless the, the wavelength, okay? Here, the important thing is that this equation, so this is what we're going to use in heat transfer calculations. But here again, please note that we can use this equation only to model the heat transfer behavior between a heat source and the surrounding, okay? So heat source should be there, which is having a surface temperature of Ts and the surrounding is having a temperature of T infinity. And we can use this uh, equation to model the heat transfer behavior uh, for that type of simple thing. Okay, otherwise what we have to do is that, so we have to define something called uh, the thermal resistor for the radiation as well. So we can do that by using this equation here actually. So, so now we know the resistors for conduction for different geometries actually, for the, the, the single thickness layers, composite walls, the cylinders and the spheres. So we know the thermal resistor for conduction. Okay, even for different geometries. And also we have already discussed the thermal resistor for radiation based on the Newton's law of cooling, right? For the radiation now, also we have to have a similar type of uh, the, the resistor to be used in different applications. And to get a thermal resistor for radiation, you have to start with this equation and then how to rearrange that into this format here. So whatever you will get here in the denominator would be the, uh, the, the resistor or the thermal resistor related to the radiation, okay? So you will get something uh, similar to this one as the, the, the resistor for the radiation, which is one over the emissivity sigma, uh, the, the surface area or the emissive surface area, surface temperature of the heat source and the temperature of the surrounding times within bracket again, uh, the surface temperature to the power two plus uh, the, the surrounding temperature to the power two. Okay, so, so this is the resistor for the radiation, right? So it is a bit complicated compared to the conduction and convection. So I'm going to show you how to get this resistor actually by starting from this equation. So then you will have a kind of good understanding how to get the thermal resistor for radiation. Okay, so let's see how we can get the resistor for the radiation uh, starting from the Stepan Boltzmann law, uh, uh, the, which we discussed a while ago. So here we have Q dot, uh, the emissivity, Stepan Boltzmann constant, the emissive surface area, surface temperature of the heat source to the power four minus uh, the temperature of the surroundings to the power four, right. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to write this equation in this format, okay, one here, and then the main denominator is as a fraction one over uh, all of this part uh, of the equation is in here, in the denominator here, right? If you compare these two, uh, they are not mathematically different, okay? So this equation is exactly same as this one, but I have rearranged it in the format that I want. Okay, so let's see why I rearrange into this format now. Okay, so then I'm going to go step by step. So we know that what we need to have is here is temperature difference. Okay, so if you remember, so uh, the all the other equations we had the temperature difference in the top. So then what I do now here in this equation, I'm going to write the surface temperature of the heat source and the surrounding temperature. Okay, to cancel that, I'm going to add the same term here as well. Okay, I'm not changing this equation at all. So, but I'm trying to modify in the way I want. I added this term here instead of one here. Okay, to cancel that out, I put another, uh, the Ts minus T infinity term uh, into this place. Still, it is the same as this one. I didn't change this equation. It is still the same as this one. Okay, hope it is clear, right? So then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to leave these two terms as it is. So then I'm going to expand this part of the equation, right? So then we can expand this part using the, the, the difference of two squares, uh, the formula uh, in algebra. So if, I think you know that, so A squared minus B squared can be written as A plus B times A minus B, okay? So that is the formula that I'm going to use to expand this term here, okay? So based on this equation now, we can expand this term into these two terms, okay? Difference of two squares. Ts squared minus T infinity squared within bracket Ts squared plus T infinity squared. Okay, so again, I'm going to expand this term into two linear factors based on the same equation, right? We could write that this is equal to Ts minus T infinity bracket 
ds plus t infinity okay this term stays as it is right. so if you carefully look at this now so you can see that these two terms are similar to each other so then we are therefore we can cancel these two terms out okay so but we but we still have uh, this uh, the temperature difference ts minus t infinity uh, in the numerator okay so we get into this format now the ts minus t infinity so of course this was cancelled out so we'll have one here and then this term emissivity times sigma a and then uh, the ts plus t infinity ts squared plus t infinity squared here right so then now if you try to compare so it's q dot is equal to the temperature difference and then whatever you will get here okay whatever you will get here is the uh, the thermal resistor as i mentioned you before right so then we get the, the thermal resistor for the radiation which is 1 over emissivity sigma a brackets ts plus t infinity again bracket ts squared plus t infinity squared so this is the resistor for the radiation or the thermal resistor for the radiation right or sometimes okay so what we could do actually if you remember the resistor for the convection we wrote it as 1 over ha okay in the same way if you try to just uh, the provide this to be hr or okay, heat transfer coefficient for the radiation okay don't get confused here so if we try to define this this part to be hr so then we can write the radiative resistor or the thermal resistor for the radiation is 1 over hra okay in some books you will find in this format hope it is clear so this is how we get the the thermal resistor for the radiation right it's not complicated so I can upload this document on the blackboard so then you can have it actually. Or otherwise, you can, you can just go through this video. So it is clearly explained here now. Okay, hope it is clear now. So then now we know the thermal resistors for the convection, conduction, and radiation as well. For the conduction, we know the thermal resistors for different geometries. But for the convection and radiation, so ideally you will have uh, the one type of resistor so we can use uh, the those resistors uh, for any any particular application the, so then only difference would be uh, the, the the surface conditions uh, for the radiation or the environmental condition for the convection right based on that uh, the, you will get different values for this part in the convection you will have different convective heat transfer coefficient depending on the different environmental conditions okay so right let's move back to the slides right so now we know how to get the thermal resistor which is given by this equation for the radiative heat transfer. Okay, here there is an example. Okay, right, I would like you to just work this out as a homework. Okay, an instrument package, okay, it's this one actually here, has a spherical outer surface of diameter D 100 millimeters, right? So here you could see the, the diameter, outer diameter is 100 millimeters and emissivity is 0 0.25. The emissivity of this surface or this object is 0 0.25. I said that emissivity could just uh, be varied from zero to one. Okay, or the ideal black body is having one, the others could have less values ideally. Okay, so here now, so we have this one 0 0.25. The package is placed in a large space uh, simulation chamber whose walls are maintained at 77 Kelvin. So this one has a, uh, the, the, the surfaces of the walls or the wall surfaces are having the temperature of 77 Kelvin. Okay, if the operation of the electronic components is restricted to the temperature range from 40 to 85, Okay, the minimum it could have is 40 degrees, the maximum is 85 degrees. What is the range of acceptable power dissipation for the package? So they're asking actually, what is the, the, uh, the acceptable, uh, the power dissipation or the heat transfer rate from the package? So depending on these two temperatures, so what would be the, uh, the, the heat transfer rate of this package uh, when it is being placed within this large chamber? Okay, to give you a hint, so here what we can do, we can just calculate the heat transfer rate through the, the normal step on Boltzmann law without using a thermal resistor actually. So we can calculate the heat transfer rate based on this temperature and also based on this temperature. So then we can just get the, the rate of heat dissipation or power dissipation from this object when it is being placed within this chamber. Okay, so please try it as homework. I'll work it out during the synchronous session actually. So far we discussed the radiative heat transfer between an object and a surrounding. Okay, it could be the rate to heat transfer from a heat source to the surrounding or otherwise there could be an object. So which is in a low temperature than the surrounding. So therefore heat transfer can be take place from the surrounding to the object or whatever the way. So the heat step on Boltzmann law was defined uh, to model the heat transfer behavior of a heat source when it is being placed in some sort of surrounding. 
Okay, so but the as I mentioned you before, and also as you know, so heat transfer can be between two objects as well. Okay, like this. So it, uh, there could be object here and another object here, and then based on their temperatures, so then uh, the the there could be heat transfer between these two uh, objects actually. So they might have different surface conditions as well. So based on that, we can model their heat transfer behavior of the emissive power using this equation here, right? But if you want to calculate the heat transfer between uh, these two surfaces, or from one to two, or two to one, it's going to be complicated. So we have to just uh, the uh, the employ some geometry related uh, the factors as well. Okay. okay, actually, but I'm not going to look at this in this unit. Okay, this is just to give you some kind of idea if you are interested in. Right. So some factors you have to consider. Space cannot store heat, but heat is reflected between surfaces. Okay, so heat can be just uh, the travel uh, the from this surface to this surface here through electromagnetic waves. So, but if you remember now, so then some amount of heat can be absorbed. Okay, some amount can be reflected back as well. So it is quite complicated now, right? So if you if you want to have some kind of idea about how we can calculate the heat transfer between object one to object two. This being the one, this being the, the object two, we can have this uh, the, the bit complicated equation. One over, one over emissivity of uh, object one, one over emissivity of object two minus one, the, the Stepan Boltzmann constant, okay? Uh, this is the, the heat transfer surface area, okay? T1 to the power four minus T to the power four, right? Here, remember that, so we have to provide uh, the, the temperature in Kelvin, okay? So here it's a temperature difference, but it has a power four. So therefore, then it matters depending on whether you substitute in degrees or Kelvin, right? Stepan Boltzmann law is related to the Kelvin or absolute temperature. So therefore, you, you must substitute the temperature in Kelvin. Remember that, okay? So it is not the case for the conduction and convection that we discussed so far. We can use either Kelvin uh, or degrees, right? But here you have to just use the Kelvin for the Stepan Boltzmann law, right? So if you can look at this now, so this is a bit complicated. As I said, I'm not going to assess you based on this, right? Heat transfer between two objects. So uh, it could be complicated cause uh, the, the heat can just travel to uh, travel from one object to the other. The some part can be absorbed or transmitted or some part can be reflected. Again, it could come back to here as well. Okay, so it's a different complicated situation. And in more complicated geometries, A need to be projected area. So then this A also could be complicated or difficult to calculate based on the geometries or depending on the complicated mm -hmm. geometries. So we have to take some uh, the, the uh, modification to the, uh, the surface area as well, right? So then you can look at some heat transfer books if you need it uh, to have some idea about uh, the heat transfer between the two surfaces based on the radiation. So, but in this unit, what I'm going to look at is the steady state heat transfer between a heat source and a surrounding for the radiation. Okay, so that is what I'm going to focus on, right? So some of the the the, uh, the emissivity values for some typical materials actually, you could see that. So I said that black bodies are having uh, the the emissivity of one. So we call this an ideal black body. Okay, or an ideal radiator. They they can absorb all the energy carried by electromagnetic waves. Okay, here are some examples. Aluminium could have 0 0.1, gold 0 0.02. Here you can see the, the, the effect of the surface conditions. The clean copper is so really shiny, so they, they are, uh, the emissivity is 0 0.02, really low. But after some time, so you might have seen in some in the copper material, some kind of oxidizations, maybe sometimes kind of greenish color. So after oxidize, so the copper can have high emissivity here. You could see 0 0.6 to 0 0.9. It could be quite good, uh, the the... Uh, uh, the uh, material that can absorb uh, the uh, the large amount of radiative heat transfer, the, the energy carried by electromagnetic waves once they have been oxi oxidized, okay? So therefore surface conditions are really matters. So ceramics 0 0.8 to 0 0.95, is, they are really good in absorbing uh, the radiative heat, heat. The plastics also again good 0 0.8 to 0 0.95, okay? So normally now you could see that generally uh, the only clean metal surfaces have low emissivity uh, values. Okay, that's a kind of indication of the, the emissivity values of some typical materials. Right? As I mentioned before, I'm not going to assess you based on the content in this slide, okay? So therefore, you don't need to remember these values or you don't need to know uh, how to calculate the heat transfer between two objects uh, based on the radiation, okay? Again, some examples of uh, the, the, uh, the emissivity values of four different materials. 
okay uh, the and in different temperatures as well you could see that emissivity could depend on the temperature as well right okay in different temperature range you can have different emissivity values so here you will have some example uh, in more detail for more materials than the previous slide so another important factor i would like to highlight here actually is a generic factor related to heat transfer so the surface conditions are really matters okay so normally it doesn't matter conduction or convection now so normally when you look at the surfaces in naked eye so you will see really perfect smooth surfaces but if you try to look at them in the the fine scale or in the nano scale or micro scale so you will find some sort of uh, the the uh, the uneven surfaces like this okay okay let's say we have two metal pieces we put them on top of each other right so we assume that it's perfect conduction between these two uh, the the layers of material but you can see that now the surfaces are not really smooth so therefore there could be convection as well in between right so then uh, depending on the structure now depending on the surface conditions uh, the heat transfer behavior could be different as well so for example so we assume that the heat transfer through this object is dominant by the the conduction but you could see now uh, the due to the, the the unevenness of the surfaces so they don't properly uh, the the uh, the contact each other so therefore some air gaps here so then some air can travel through so therefore it could influence the heat transfer calculations if you use only uh, the the conduction okay but it's really difficult for us to just do the calculation based on this we have to assume that it's a perfect uh, the 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 uh, bonding between two surfaces there is no any gaps okay so if you want to take that into account sometimes we define something called contact resistance if you have different material layers actually we didn't discuss before so uh, the so we have let's say these two different materials here so we have a different thermal conductivity or different resistor different resistor and then so we also we have to define some extra resistor for this uh, the junction between them we call it a contact resistance okay so that is something also you should notice here right so in convection actually so we we would like to have some turbulent flow behaviors or the the more mixing or swirl motion of the flow so i mentioned it before uh, the turbulence can enhance the convective heat transfer coefficient okay so so higher the turbulence of the flow used in convection uh, the the more effective the heat transfer is okay and again radiation the surface conditions can matters so then i mentioned before uh, the the surface conditions uh, could influence the emissivity of an object right so if you if let's say there's an object if you try to uh, the uh, the paint black uh, on on top of the surface so that means we are changing the emissivity of the surface okay or otherwise there's another important fact you could consider is that so if you don't have a smooth surface again there could be different ways of reflecting the uh, the, the energy carried by electromagnetic waves okay so therefore it could be really complicated behavior depending on the surface conditions right so here there could be some kind of multiple reflections okay uh, com uh, the compared to very smooth surface so then surface conditions are uh, the important in all all modes of heat transfer right for the uh, the conduction it could create some contact resistance in between layers for the conduction right uh, in the convection actually so if you have a a wavy surface that also really good actually it will increase the uh, the heat transfer surface area okay let's say some air flow is just traveling through this surface now it's really smooth so but if it is traveling through this surface now here you could see the surface area is high so the surface area is high means so then it it will it will just promote the heat transfer rate connect to heat transfer also based on the uh, the surface conditions of the object involved in in the heat transfer okay and for the radiation so the this type of uneven surfaces can create some multiple reflections so therefore uh, it could also create some issues with the uh, the heat transfer uh, the occurring through uh, radiation as well so therefore so the the surface conditions are important in heat transfer so these are some factors you would like to uh, understand okay so i think this is all i want to discuss on uh, the the heat transfer actually so uh, the then uh, the now you know how to calculate uh, the the heat transfer based on the conduction convection and radiation so possibly you we can uh, look at how we can just involve all three modes of heat transfer in some calculations okay so that means conduction convection radiation so i'll try to discuss some related example uh, the in the synchronous session so then uh, the you will have some kind of idea how we can just uh, the uh, combine uh, the all three different resistors for conduction convection and radiation Uh, in one calculations to get some sort of uh, the uh, the heat transfer value uh, 
for a given applications you are in your case you are interested in the heat transfer in material pursuing applications okay so then this type of uh, the heat transfer calculation should be useful in designing dyes okay selecting process operating conditions okay sometimes designing some uh, the screws or some other objects used in material processing the fluid flow behavior and heat transfer should be real useful uh, in most of the applications in material processing so as as materials engineers you have to use them in design uh, applications and also in uh, the processing related applications as well so therefore we better learn them clearly so but in this unit i want i want to give you some rough idea to um, to make some start uh, to learn fluid flow behavior uh, and also heat transfer at the very basic level Okay, so if you have any question, please make sure to just raise them during the synchronous session.